Hello, and welcome to Tax and Tech, a Deloitte podcast focused on helping you navigate the ever-changing tax technology landscape through insightful conversations with Deloitte technology leaders. I'm your host, Emily Van Vliet, a partner in our tax management consulting practice here at Deloitte. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of Tax and Tech, our Deloitte tax podcast focused on all of your tax technology needs and issues. We recognize that technology is advancing so rapidly that that it can seem difficult for tax leaders to keep up. And so we have created this podcast to, to really invite you into conversations with our Deloitte tax technology leaders to help you navigate the shifting landscape as you chart your tax department's digital future. So today I am very pleased uh, to have Beth Miller joining us. Beth is our AI and analytics leader for Deloitte Tax. And so what we have teed up today is a conversation all around our artificial intelligence and, and what that means for the tax department. So Beth, as, as we kind of get going here, you know, AI seems to be a term that is thrown around a lot, right? And, and in my mind, maybe there are different types of technologies that can get wrapped up in that term. So when you talk about artificial intelligence or AI, what, what do you really mean by that term? Sure. The definition I like to use for AI is really what you said. It's a collection of technologies that can be used to perform functions that we've traditionally thought of as requiring a human brain or human intelligence. So functions like reading documents or handwriting and reasoning or making a deduction from a set of facts and sorting through information for patterns or recognizing speech. All of those are functions of human intelligence that these technologies can start to imitate. So there's no one single tool that is AI, that is a human brain replacement, but but rather AI is all about how we bring together this collection of technologies in a way that starts to mimic these actions. Okay, great. Yeah, that's very helpful. So AI also has almost a sci-fi type of connotation to it, right? <laughs> so, right. So, so let me also ask you, are we talking about an opportunity for the future, tax departments in the future, or do you believe there are real use cases that, that make some sense today? That's a great question. And there's this tendency to think of this in a real out of this universe way and in that sci-fi way. But there's a real wide spectrum of use cases for AI that range from pretty straightforward examples to obviously very complex ones that we haven't reached yet. And I sort of like to think of it like there's the moonshot that, that everyone wants to try for versus really practical applications on a day-to-day basis that maybe aren't as as you know, mind blowing as as that moonshot, but add real value to organizations. And so where we are today, so so first, the use of rule-based automation is really prevalent in the field of tax today, whether that's posting journal entries for your quarterly provision or automatically drawing data from your ERP system to use for tax purposes, e-filing tax returns, things like that. But then we're really starting to get more advanced and we see continued movement along this spectrum of AI complexity for things like using AI to read and interpret contracts, looking for specific tax census size information that we need to draw out of hundreds of pages of contracts or making determinations around taxability and applicable rates for sales and use taxes on, on millions of transactions. Or other uses here now today include gathering data from scanned tax forms and putting it in the right place for further tax processing, or even using chatbots to answer tax questions. So there's a lot more of this AI universe to discover, but there are some real valuable um, use cases that, that are in place even here today. Okay, great. So, so you've just mentioned, you know, kind of a, a number of components of what, what you described as a collection of technologies, right? But as, as you think about that collection, uh, what, what tools do you believe are ultimately going to be the most useful for tax teams? 
Yeah, I'll call out five that I think here and today we're finding to be the most useful for tax organizations. And first, I'd put in that category the space of automation tools. And there's a wide range in this area that um, range from simple to complex themselves in terms of their capability. But taking a lot of the routine tasks that tax folks spend their time on and building in some automation is is one area that's really beneficial. The second area I'd call out would be optical character recognition or OCR tools. And those tools help us draw data from one place into a usable format. So perhaps it's reading a PDF file with data points that I need, or even, you know, in cases, handwritten notes. Definitely OCR has a lot of application for tax. Third one would be data classification tools. If you think about the field of tax, so much of what we do is take data from one point and try to classify it for different rules for tax purposes, whether that's state apportionment or it's expense allocation for um, guilty purposes, things like that. Data classification is a big effort um, in a lot of areas in tax. Fourth one would then be machine learning tools. So creating an ability to process a set set of data, return a set of results, learn what was right and wrong about those results, and have a feedback loop into the machine to do a little better the next time. So the ability to process data with machine learning, huge benefit in tax. And then the fifth one I would call out would be predictive modeling algorithms. And tax has traditionally operated based on the data as it sits today, or even very often a look back of data. And now that we are starting to get our arms around all this data, we want to talk about how we can use that data to make predictions about the future. So those would be five I would call out. And, you know, one interesting data point I thought I would share from a survey that we have done is 63% of organizations are using some form of basic analytics like dynamic and interactive dashboards. 57% are using more advanced analytics like that predictive modeling I referred to. And we're even seeing today that 20% are using more advanced AI tools like machine learning, adaptive decision-making. So hopefully that gives you a sense that this isn't um, too futuristic, but, but companies are really finding the value of, that, of those tools today. Yeah, yeah, no, the, those stats are, are definitely helpful. And, you know, as, as you describe those five technologies, what, what, what I often see is that they, they're also very powerful when they're combined, right? So, so I know we've seen cases where OCR is used to gather the data that is then used in, in a machine learning algorithm, connecting predictive analytics into some of the data that you're either classifying or processing u- using machine learning. That could have great potential, right? So is, is that kind of combination some, something that you see prevalent in this area of AI? Absolutely. That's spot on. And it is how you bring these different technologies together. And so you start by thinking of the challenge you want to solve for. You don't worry about which technologies it takes, but but sit down and think about a problem with a new lens and a new perspective and say, okay, what are the fundamental things I'm trying to accomplish here? And then you figure out which technologies can help with each part of the puzzle. And then as you bring it all together, you have this portfolio solution using the technologies in a way that solves your problem. Perfect, perfect. And so something else that that I was really curious about your point of view on has to do with value. What what sort of value is is there uh, in these technologies for tax teams? And and maybe what you're describing around combinations is is part of how we drive that value. But what what is what is your point of view on the potential value add for tax and all of this? Yeah, let me touch on two points. I'll touch on efficiency and I'll touch on insights. So first on efficiency, certainly tax departments are under a lot of pressure these days to find gains in efficiency. 
the regulatory and reporting requirements on tax departments, both inside the U.S. and around the world, are, are growing literally every day. So the work is, is increasing the need to provide compliance services within their organizations as well as planning services are just are growing and um, it's a real challenge for our uh, for tax organizations to keep up with. So we see tax departments are looking for opportunities to use technology for increasing efficiency to to do that routine data gathering, the basic analysis so that their team can operate more efficient efficiently. That's certainly one of the first value drivers for AI. The second one is around insights. So I, I really believe that AI opens the door to unlock insights from all of that data that exists. We know so much data is there for our use and we use it for specific purposes, but what if we could pull that data out of those specific uses that we have, have it at our fingertips, and use it to gain more insights. And when we can solve for that, we help tax move closer to being a valued business partner within the organization with data available on a real-time basis and the ability to really march at the speed of the business to enable decisions to be made with, with tax consequences informed. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And so you've just described what I think many of the tax leaders we work with would recognize as their desired future state, right? They, they do want to be that value-added business partner who's Absolutely. moving at, at the pace of business. So, right, so right. if you think about that goal, the, then this, you know, this suite of technology may very well be worth checking out. Let me also ask you, Beth, your point of view around maybe one of the million-dollar questions in, in this space, and, and that is, is AI ultimately going to replace the need for tax professionals in my department? What, what do you think about that? That is always one of the first questions I get, whether I'm talking to students on campus or to VPs of tax and CFOs. And you know what, what we believe at Deloitte and what I personally really subscribe to is what we call the power of with, humans with machines. And, and that's all about using machines and, and AI to make human expertise greater not a replacement strategy, right? But, but how can we amplify our knowledge? And this will allow departments to increase their agility, to shift the human focus to those activities that really drive value, that drive competitive advantage for the organization. And so I don't believe it will replace the need for humans. I think, in fact, it could make what we can do in tax grow exponentially and and therefore creates new opportunities. I think we're a long way from the sci-fi vision of of robots um, taking over tax and really looking at how can we drive the power of with humans with machines. I, I agree with you completely. I, I also ascribe to to that, you know, message of amplifying what we do as yes. as professionals and, and really enabling the, you know, sometimes urgent need to be able to do more with less g- given all of the regulatory change. So yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you kind of raised that in this discussion. Well, Beth, many times I kind of le- like to ask, what is the one thing that you would recommend our listeners do around this topic? So what, what do you think about that? Or, you know, if, if you'd rather you could take it kind of a little bit more generally, how do companies get started with AI? Yeah, I'll, I'll use a mantra that we use in several places, but I think it's so applicable here. I say, think big, start small, and act fast. So first, think about the opportunities that are possible. Where are those pain points that your uh, tax department struggles with in terms of you know, being a good business partner to the rest of the organization or meeting compliance needs or struggling with resources? So think of all those, those pain points and make a list and then start to prioritize that list in terms of effort and value. Effort to how in terms of how hard it is to tackle that and then value to find value however it makes sense in your organization with your strategic initiatives so that's think big but then start small so start with a use case 
that's going to add value to the organization, but maybe don't start with your hairiest problem on the list, right? For your, for your first effort, you want to um, find something where it's, it's going to be a meaningful impact, but it's something that you can get your arms around what this is going to entail and, and how to do it. And then finally, act fast. Build a proof of value. Don't take one process and try to build an end-to-end AI solution on a 30-step process. But but find a slice of it where you can prove the value of this. Get a quick win so you can socialize that with others in your department, in your organization, and get people excited about the possibilities. Or, Or sometimes, to be quite honest, we, we determined it wasn't the right place to start and we want to act fast to figure that out before we over invest in the area. But when you do find that quick win, uh, make sure you're sharing the benefits with the end users. Hopefully they were along the journey the whole way, but they can see the benefits and start to get excited about the opportunities and then go back to your um, list of opportunities and, and pick the next one and continue on. So I, I, I always say think big, but start small and then make sure you act in a nimble and fast way. Yeah, that that is that is all great advice. And and I do think that nimble can, can be a very important thing to keep in mind um, as you as you start to work with some of these emerging technologies. Uh, also, that point of value, right? Not not every use case is really going to be worth your team tackling, uh, especially in, in the early stages of your of your journey with technologies like AI. For sure. For sure. That's right. That's right. We started using the phrase proof of value instead of proof of concept because concepts are great, but value is what we're all being asked to drive in our organization. So, so find that proof of value quickly in your process. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Awesome. Well, Beth, thank you so much. I think we'll go ahead and and wrap up there for the moment, but I do really appreciate your time and your willingness to share uh, with us all your your insights about AI for tax. And to everyone listening in, thank you as well for for joining. I, I would certainly encourage you to subscribe to our Tax and Tech podcast wherever you consume podcasts so that you don't miss any of our episodes. We have more coming for you around other types of emerging technologies and also how technologies might apply to specific uh, process areas within a tax team. So until next time, a big thank you to everyone listening. I hope you'll join us again as we continue to chart the tax department's digital future on another episode of Tax and Tech. Thank you very much. And finally, I would encourage you to subscribe to our Tax and Tech podcast series wherever you are listening in today so that you don't miss any of our episodes. We have episodes coming up around cloud ERP systems, tax technology updates related to U.S. tax reform, and many other timely topics connected to tax technology. So a big thank you to everyone listening in. I hope you will join us again as we continue to chart the tax department's digital future on another episode of Tax and Tech. Thanks very much.